God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed on the name, the only begotten Son of God. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Life eternal after death rests upon one. The one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. That rules out religion. That rules out what you can do by works. That rules out anything but the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Rest assured that death is coming. Death may even be today for some of you. And you just do not rest inside a six-foot hole or a cavity of a building. But upon death, there is life beyond the grave, according to the Bible. There is no purgatory. There are no virgins. There's no limbo. And you don't come back as a cockroach for me to step on you and kill you again. You will enter into a place of heaven or into a place of called hell. Upon the closing of your eyes of death, you will find yourself in one of two places. In order to get to one, God has prescribed a way to get to Him. And that way is the Lord Jesus Christ. No man cometh unto the Father but by me are the words that were spoken by God the Son. Upon the finished work of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that He died for your sins. He was buried and arose again according to the scriptures. That is the finished gospel. That is the way of heaven. That is the truth of heaven. That is the life of heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ. God has prescribed one way to heaven. You must believe on that way. In order to be saved, the Bible says you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation rests in no other. Without the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your faith, as in your belief, all is not well. There is a hell. And the Bible proclaims to men like us on the streets, to Christians, to go ye to all the world and preach the gospel. It is so serious that God goes to those who have already saved, tells us to get out of the comfort zone, get off the couch, and tell the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is not willing that any should perish. God does not want to throw you into a devil's hell. He has his Bible. He has people who are faithful to him with gospel tracts, with all kinds of ministries of knocking on your doors, a preacher on the street, an open Bible for you to know what God expects from you. And rest assured, death will come. 
cannot do it over again. For the love of God, He sent His Son. He sent His Son because you are a sinner. I'll tell you how I know you're a sinner. And I don't need to list sin. I don't need to say adultery. I don't need to say theft. I just say the graveyard proves you're going, you are a sinner. For the wages of sin is death. You may not say you are a sinner. You may not believe you are a sinner. But when they put that rock above your head and say, Here lies you, that is the testimony you are a sinner. And if you are a sinner, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. John chapter 3 says, For verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There's nothing in there about church attendance. There's nothing in there about how good you are. It is belief. It's being born again because your first birth is wrong. You were born of a man and of a woman, and you were born of Adam's sin nature. You are a sinner by birth. Some sins carry on from birth to birth. Diseases of your parents pass on. But there's one thing that is known of the Bible. If you are born of a woman, you are but a few days of trouble as the sparks fly upward. As a sinner, you have been diagnosed with a terminal cancer called death. No doctor, no pharmacist can help you die. You're going to die. You will die. And yet, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to remedy your death. See, you can wake up according to the Bible in hell, being tormented, in torment. As the rich man in the book, in the Gospel of Luke, you can choose that way. How do you go to hell? Do whatever you please. Do nothing. Do whatever you want will get you into hell. Do nothing will get you into hell. Ignore the message that we're preaching to you out of the Bible. You'll go to hell. Well, how do I get to heaven? Well, the Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. If I were to be killed right here, right now, upon the close of my eyes, I'll be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ by the gospel that Christ died for my sins. He was buried according to the scriptures. <clears throat> and again, he rose the third day according to the scriptures that put my faith and belief in the shed blood of the testimony upon Calvary's tree that I am a born-again Christian. I will pass from life to death to be with the one that died for me on Calvary. There is no hell for a Bible-believing Christian who is born again. John 3, 3. Life does not begin at 40. Life does not begin at 50. Life begins at over the hill, and that hill is Calvary. Here's one time I tell you to come over the hill. Come to Calvary's cross on your knees, repent as a sinner, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and go sliding down into the way of heaven. That's over the hill. If you want to die the way of man, you want to die the way of Satan, it ain't over the hill, it's a drop in the hole. Because the Bible tells you that hell right now is under your feet. You'll drop. And you won't roll. And you 
you won't see her be put out. Thank you. Come to Calvary's hell and be saved. Come to Calvary, to, to the Messiah, to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is on that tree for your sins. And when you have come to that hell, when you have come to the Savior, and you believe on the work that He has done upon Calvary's tree, take a little walk to the graveyard. Approach the hole and see that there is no stone lying.
is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You stand in condemnation. It's not, oh, I will go to hell. No, you are already there in the eyes of God. Because you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, I'm sorry to say, but this loud mouth preacher that you hate has given you no alibi by preaching the gospel. You can never tell God as of this day, I never knew. Because I am telling you about the way. I am telling you about the truth. I am telling you about the life. And right now you stand condemned if you reject Jesus Christ in his offering. We preach the gospel to the world that you may know what you need to do. And what you need to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, not doing so, making fun of the preaching, wishing I was gone, ah, he's an idiot, he's a fool, you stand in John chapter 3 condemned before that God, even as a Catholic, even as Muslim, even as a Mormon, even as a Jehovah Witness, if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are condemned because of the preaching of the gospel. You better be thankful that I am not ashamed of the Word of God. You better be thankful that Mark 16 tells me to go in all the world and preach the gospel. And the message is, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish. He said, why do you keep quoting that verse over and over and over? You believe that verse and I'll move to the next one. You haven't even got to the love of God yet. You haven't even got to belief yet. We're not moving on to anything else until you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. From there, I'll train you up. I'll raise you as a newborn babe in Christ. But until then, you got to get the very first message that's out for you. You're going to die, and you're going to wake up somewhere in eternity, and there's only two places, heaven or hell, heaven's by Jesus Christ alone. And you tell your priest I said that. And I'll sit with an open Bible with him, he probably never opened a day in his life. You tell that to Islam. And I'll tell Islam, the blood of Jesus Christ saves us from sins, not the blood of Christians. You tell that to Joe Smith. I tell him the Bible says you ought to have one wife and leave other wives alone as you die in prison by a mock man of husbands. You tell their Jehovah Witness, and I'll tell them John 10.30, I and the Father are one, so shut up. You tell them, oh, there's no God. I'll tell you, Psalm says, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. You realize one day, prepare to meet thy God, the Bible says, you will not stand before a Baptist God. Nope. God is not Baptist. You will not stand before a Catholic God. God's not Catholic. God's not Methodist. God is 100% Jehovah, relying upon His Son that humans need to believe on. He must be born again. God is a holy, righteous, almighty he ain't a God of religions. He is a God of the Bible. He has raised the Word of God above His own name. That's God. That is the God that said in the beginning, His words were, let there be. And there was. The God that made this planet. 
the God that made that sun, the God that made these trees, the Bible tells us went to Calvary because you are going to die. And you will die in your sins without the gospel. And when you die in your sins, you will pay for your own sins in the lake of fire that burneth forever. Now, you can never believe what Jesus had done to pay for your sins. Or you can do it yourself. You can pay for your own sins in hell. And in hell the fire, you will be paying for your sins and you'll never get out because you can never pay for your sins. That's a holy and righteous God. Because He has given you the way to get out. He has given you the payment. And God's incapable of lying, so He's giving you the truth. And with that, He's giving you eternal life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. It's not hard. God ain't asking you to shed blood. He's already shed His blood. Acts 20:28. 20, you got life insurance, but you don't have death insurance. And the premiums of death insurance has been paid by Jesus Christ. Listen, the benefits of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and being saved is far much better than what God has to offer you when you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible records that you'll get a new body. You'll get that perfect body. But that comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, not makeup, not plastic. You'll get a new body made by the Creator, not China. You will have the ultimate insurance health care plans in heaven that Obama can't even do. God's health care in heaven is absolutely no pain, sorrow, no death, no accidents, no hospitals do I read in Revelation. You'll have a new body that will never suffer again and never have pain again. That's God's health care.